Hey, uh, don't worry, I didn't quit. I didn't disappear without good cause or reason. I actually got sick a month or two ago whenever I'd stop uploading videos about my whole 13 to 3K series. And then I got really busy with real life stuff. And then I got sick again. And then I just got lazy, but nevertheless. Hello, welcome back. 13 to 3K, season three, episode whatever this is. I don't know, eight, nine, 20. I really don't even know. But here we are. This is the last day of season three. It is April 22nd, 2024. And you can see my vengeance demon hunter is dancing his buns off in celebration of season three coming to an end. So, uh, you know, the, at the end of the day, what the question is, did I reach my goal? Did all 13 characters hit 3k raider.io score? Yeah, pretty easily. Uh, didn't really struggle, thankfully. I actually reached it. Let me check my notes here. Uh, three weeks ago. Yeah, about three weeks ago. So yeah, not bad. All things considered. That being said, I don't think I will ever, ever push 13 characters to 3k or the equivalent of 3k ever again i it's just well i'm getting ahead of myself let me let me back up a step i don't think i'll ever do this again not because it was difficult mind you it, it really wasn't that hard but because it was time consuming to say the least to put it plainly and simply it was just too much time. It just, it just required too much of my time. Every single moment that I was logged into this dead gum game, there was no challenge necessarily reaching 3K in terms of difficulty. You'll see that my characters across the board running 24s, 23s, 22s, 21s, a couple 20s still up there. I think my VDH has done like 125 just because I wanted to hit 3.1K. That's cool. But the stress that accompanied the push had nothing to do with, oh my God, this key's so hard. Will I ever time this plus 22? Who cares, man? It's a plus 22. It's not that difficult, all, th all things considered. Sorry if I'm ruffling any feathers. If you're struggling out there with 12s, I mean no offense. But for somebody like me, a plus 22, a plus 23 is very much like, okay, let's just run through the, press W, run through the dungeons. Maybe you pop a defensive every once in a while. No big deal. I'm coming across extremely arrogant. That's not my... I promise you that's not what I'm trying to, to convey. I do apologize. No, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm doing this without edits, without filters. I just, want, I just want my raw emotional state on display. But the timing of the dungeons, finishing keys on time was the most stressful thing about this whole experience. Because every dungeon that I didn't time was a giant kick to the nuts. There, I said it. I actually wound up running over 800 dungeons this season. Over 800. Some people run well over 1,000 keys per season, which uh, that's cool. No big deal. Um, but yeah, over 800 keys timed, finished, completed across my 13 characters by the way, not just from the, the onset, the outset, whatever, not just from the beginning of season three, but from patch 10 to five back in January. Keep that in mind. I was running about 60, about 60 keystones per week, timing about 60 keystones per week for like three months straight. It was nuts, man. So anyway, as you can imagine, not timing a dungeon is what stung, it's what hurt the most. Every single time I stepped into even a 20, a 21, a 22, and we missed it or we didn't complete it and I wasted 10, 15, 30 minutes, it just, man, it added up so quickly. That's where the stress and the frustration for me stemmed from. Not, oh man, here comes Throne of the Tides. You know, that third boss is super hard as a tank. That fourth boss, people love to drop their oil all over the place. Their ooze, their goop, whatever you want to call it. Oh, rats. That mechanic is so difficult. No, man, screw that crap. Timing keys with idiots is difficult. And every time we didn't time a key, God, man, it was so frustrating. I, perhaps you can tell 
I'm frustrated by this whole experience. Even though it was it was actually genuinely a lot of fun. It really was. But yeah, I don't think I'll ever do this again. Not because it was too difficult, but because it just required too much time. And again, to kind of... I'm, I'm probably talking in circles at this point in time, so I apologize. But for me, it was just so frustrating whenever I was in a key and somebody just sucked. And somebody failed and we didn't time it because of one or two people or one or two mistakes or whatever the case may be. That's not a big deal if you're trying to do eight dungeons a week. That's not a big deal even if you're trying to do 16 or 24 or 32. But 60 dungeons minimum per week is just... It was nuts, man. Absolutely nuts. Anyway, let's talk about the classes. I have 13 classes and specializations to talk about. I have some notes here. This is not an all-encompassing. This is everything that I feel or everything that, that I think about each class and spec. But here are some here are some notes, okay? And I, I'm, I'm going mostly in order from... Hey, get back up. You're dancing. You're not done yet. Anyway, I'm going mostly in order from right to left, but... I think I just, um, I think I have some things out of order based on my notes, so bear with me. Guardian Druid! Starting off with Guardian Druid. Actually started Season 3 as Resto because I played a little bit of Resto in Season 1 and or Season 2. I can't quite remember. Uh, but I wanted to do all six classes that could tank. I wanted to play as a tank. So Guardian Druid. I started off enjoying Guardian Druid. But as I approached 3k... I didn't quite enjoy it as much at that point in time. However, since hitting 3K and being able to just run keys kind of, you know, casually, calmly, freely, whatever you want to call it, Guardian Druid has crept back up there is probably my third or fourth favorite tank right now. Thing the, 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 that that specific class and specialization um Yeah, man, I tell you what, it can it can take some damage or mitigate some damage and heal through some damage, whatever you want to call it. It can definitely tank. And I, I very much enjoy the tanking components it brings to the table. The control, I'm gonna talk about this with all six tanks. How much how well can it tank? Can it mitigate damage, absorb damage, heal damage, ignore damage, whatever the case may be? How well can it tank? And how much control does it bring to the table? I mean, Guardian Druids off the top of my head. We have Incapacitating Roar, we have Typhoon, we have Ursals, we have... I play a Torrent, so I have a, a free War Stomp in there. I have a Skull Bash. Uh, I'm probably forgetting one or two things, so... Pretty average toolkit. Interrupt here or there, Knockback, Stun, whatever, AoE CC here or there, that's cool. Not, not a ton, not King of the Hill, so to speak, but not terrible. But I really like how well it tanks. And I'm pretty sure going into Season 4... It's, it's looking pretty daggum good. Um, Frost Mage. I know he's in the middle of my tracker right here. But Frost Mage. I'm just not a mage player, man. That being said, I really, really, really want to learn how to play Fire. I started off this season as Fire. Quickly switched to Frost because I just didn't feel like learning Fire. I just, I just didn't want to deal with it. And the keys that I was running early on, everything died so quickly. Fire just didn't have any chance whatsoever to pop off and... and, and you know, uh, compete with other players in, in the group or whatever you want to call it. So I swapped to Frost and I never looked back. But Fire, kind of a caveat, little offshoot here. I got War Within Access, uh, Alpha Access, which is really nice. And I I, I, I piddled around, I, I messed around with Sun Fury, which is one of the hero uh, talent specializations or whatever they're called. Dude, I'm telling Sun Fury looks amazing. If you're a mage player, man, grats. Probably one of my favorite hero talent trees or whatever you want again whatever it's called um even though i'm not a big mage player nor am i very good at mage dude sun fury looks amazing golly and it looks like it's gonna be super i mean again balancing is is months away from being not that it's ever complete but you know what i mean it's months away from release and stuff but yeah uh grats fire mages and i don't remember what the other it's either fire and frost or fire and arcane but sun fury looks awesome not my favorite range dps to play during season three but yeah, it was okay. It was okay. Not my favorite. Not my least favorite. Kind of um on the lower end of 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 my enjoyment spectrum or whatever you want to call it. But yeah, I think I think I'm gonna put forth a little bit more effort in the war within to learn Fire Mage because of Sun Fury. But anyway, enough of that. Uh, Outlaw Rogue. It took me a lot longer to adapt 
to Outlaw Rogue this season than I expected. The last time I played it was during BFA. And I, I took to Outlaw like that in BFA. And I can't sit here and articulate what's different. Anyone who's played the class long enough can probably tell you, oh, new this, this, that, and the other, this is different, and this lasts longer, this doesn't exist anymore, and so on and so forth. I don't remember. It's been years. But I remember back in BFA when I was playing Outlaw Rogue, it was super easy, very easy to perform at, didn't really struggle with it. And maybe I just, maybe it was just a me thing. Maybe I just couldn't get into this new mentality of Outlaw Rogue with, you know, the having, ah, oh God, I'm not on the class. There's the, the, the six minute cooldown that, that I don't think it actually is a six minute cooldown because something reduces it, but it, it extends your roll the bones buffs by 30 seconds. You have that, um, echoing blade or whatever it's called. I don't really like that me mechanic or that ability. I should say there are certain components to the specialization right now that I don't love. But I still enjoy the specialization as a whole. I'm just not a big melee guy. Like if I'm going to be in melee, I'd rather tank. So Outlaw Rogue for me, again, kind of on the lower half of the, how much do I enjoy playing this? How much do I enjoy playing this right now? Spectrum. I don't hate it. I just don't love it the way that I did in PFA. Super strong. Don't get me wrong. Super strong, especially in, in good hands. But eh, I just, I just didn't really, it never really clicked with me. And I wish it did. Prot Warrior. Woo -hoo -hoo! Listen, I've said this before and I'll say it again. I love Prot Warrior. I will always love Prot Warrior. It is a beast of a tank. Again, we're talking about how well does a tank and how well does it control Mythic Plus poles, you know, uh, on a pole to pole basis. I'm telling you, man, Prot Warrior is fun to play. It's super strong. It mitigates anything and everything. It's got spell, spell reflect. It's got, it's got spell block. We have shield block. We have last stand, uh, shield wall. We have a commanding shout. We have other things that I'm forgetting. The point, it's got to ignore pain. We're crying out loud. It has a heal every like 30 seconds or whatever it is, which isn't a ton, but nevertheless, I'm telling you, man, Prot Warrior is the real deal. I remember this, just, this is just one example. I was in a, where's, where's my Prot Warrior? Uh, 80, I was in a 22, uh, may, might have even been a 23. No, it had to been 22. Yeah, it was a 22. Tyrannical AD, which is not some crazy high key, but it was a 22 Tyrannical Yasma fight. And we all know how Yasma goes. Long story short, literally everyone in the group died around 40, 45%. And I soloed Yasma from 40, 45 to zero. It took me like three or four minutes because I could spell reflect. She doesn't do that much damage to tanks. It's more of a group fight for more than one reason. But I, you know, it's just, it's just the, t he tanks so well. It's incredible. I love Prot Warriors. The problem isn't how well it tanks, however. The problem is the control component to this specialization. And this is a huge... I, listen, I could go on for an hour about why Prot Warrior deserves to have more control and how to improve its control and so on and so forth. But that's really what it boils down to. I mean, you compare it to a, a Vengeance Demon Hunter or even a Prot Paladin, uh, it, there's just no comparison. It just it, it can't do anything. It can interrupt every once in a while. You got a Shockwave. You got a Fear. Again, I play a Torrent, so I get a War Stomp mixed in. I have that one, the the, the hammer that I can throw, a single target hammer, which uh, stuns a single target for a couple seconds. But there's, there's just not enough there, man. Too many stuns, not enough actual control. You do have a talent that allows you to do like an AoE interrupt every minute and a half. It's just not enough. You, you There's... And and, and I, I say this later on in, in my notes, like all six tanks can tank... 27s, 28s, whatever, right? If if a player knows how to play the specialization, it's fine. But just because they can do it at a 27, 28, 29 doesn't mean that it's balanced. And it doesn't mean that the group isn't picking up the slack. And again, if you have a group comp, if you have a, a group of friends, if you have a team and they're comfortable and they're okay with it, more power to you. I'm not saying it's impossible, right? I'm just saying that as someone who has pugged and has pushed all of these guys to 3k. Glaringly obvious Prot Warrior falls short. Far from the finish line in terms of group control and what it brings to the table. Anyway. Uh, augmentation Evoker. Man, I started off loving this. Quickly fell out of love with it. Uh, I, to make a long story short, I'm just the kind of player that wants to tank. That wants to deal the damage. I don't want to be the guy that augments the tank. Or the DPS and supports them. Uh, I suck at casting rest and using rescue. I'm just the worst at it. 
I don't think I want to play Aug again. If I play my Evoker at any point in time for the rest of this of this expansion, I'll probably go Devastation. My understanding, I'm not some Evoker expert. My understanding is that uh, Devastation right now, not that good. Now, again, not listen, any class can clear 20s, 25s, etc. right? Any specialization. Uh, except for Affliction Warlock, apparently. Well, that's a, that's a joke for the Affliction Warlocks out there. Um... Yeah, there's just something about Aug that I just don't enjoy personally. And I know they're super meta, and I know people love to have them in their groups. I don't even fall into that category. I actually don't enjoy augmentation evokers in my groups. I just, I don't know, man. Maybe it's because more, more, maybe it's because people like me are playing the specialization right now. And what I mean by that is, you know, it's an easy specialization to pick up. Hey, here's your armor buff tank hey here's two dps buffs for our 2d here's a dps buff buff for our two dps uh i'll bloodlust every once in a while here's a group heal every once in a while uh oh here's some main stat every you know 25 seconds uh, I can, I'll, I'll 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 get the buff to last 15 maybe 18 seconds because i'm playing kind of lazily it's just you can real at least in my experience when you're playing with a good augmentation evoker Versus a decent or even just a lazy or bad aug. I mean, it, I'm telling you, you can tell, you can feel the difference. So I don't like playing with them because most aug evokers in this 20 to 22, 23 range just aren't that good. Plain and simple. And it's it's painfully obvious when you're when you're coupled with them. Brewmaster monks. Mm, really fun tank, man. Really fun tank. Uh, I, I remember playing Brewmaster the day it came out back in 2012 with Mr. Pandaria. And I actually, I had played a Prot Warrior from 05 when I started the game all the way up to 2012. And I, I never ever considered playing anything else. I was a Prot Warrior through and through for those seven seven years or whatever it was. But man, when, when Monks hit, and I had beta tested Mop a little bit before then, that was that was right before I started streaming, a year, a year or so before I started streaming. But I remember beta testing it and being like, wow, this class is fun. And it played a bit differently back then than it does nowadays, of course. Uh, rest in peace. Oh, what is it called? The, the, the keg you used to be able to throw and AoE slow the mobs that you would use on, you know, throughout the entire expansion, but particularly on the ads on that um, on the garage fight. I don't remember what it's shattering keg. I don't remember what it's. Hey, get back up, my dance. Um, But anyway, I love Brewmaster Monks. I still think they're a lot of fun to play. I love how stagger works. I love having a big absorption shield. I love being able to heal myself. I love just how it tanks and how it plays. And I don't think it has nearly enough control uh, as basically, that's true for basically four out of the six tanks in my opinion is the control. It's not the tanking that falls short, it's the control that falls short. I know you have ring of peace, you have your you know AOE leg sweep stun, you have, uh, <laughs> some uh, par paralysis you can use as a stop uh, on a lot of mobs etc etc but there's just not enough there but i love how the tank plays shout out to brewmaster monks and blood dk same thing dude if every tank had a grip it would be i would be so happy i would be so happy i love grips well i think only two tanks have grip right sigil of chains for bdh and then you know death grip for um and abomination slam i don't I, I literally have not seen a single tank or single blood DK have Gorfine's Grasp or whatever it's called, the, the AoE grip. It's just unnecessary. But in any case, I love grip. The self-healing that blood brings to the table is amazing. You have, I think it's called Tombstone is your big shield. And then you have your big magic shield, whatever, uh, like whatever that green shield that you put on. I can't remember what it's called. Anti-magic shield, I guess. I love blood DKs. I think they, I think the tanking, you have to, you have to understand, you know, your damage intake and healing it back up and absorbing this and blah, blah, blah. You definitely have to learn. It's a different tanking style, much like Brewmaster is a different tanking style, right? But man, I love blood DK. Woo! It's just, you know, now gripping. I love being able to position mobs, grip mobs, interrupt with a grip, reposition with a grip. Hey, get out of sanguine, whatever the case may be, right? I love blood DK. And, and I'm, I'm pretty sure Blood DK was super duper meta toward the end of Shadowlands. That was, that was when I was taking a big break from WoW, so I, I don't have any personal experience with it. But if Blood DK ever becomes super duper meta, dude, I'm, I'm all... Heck, man, if any of these tanks become super duper meta, and I'll touch on that in a second, you're, you'll see that I'm on my VDH for a reason, right? But uh, I love tanking, plain and simple. And I love all six tanks right now for different reasons. And yeah, anyway, you get the idea. So let's see what's next. Oh, 
Protection Paladin. <laughs> Tell you what, I keep going back and forth between the Prop Pally and the VDH, my Vengeance Demon Hunter. And I, 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 it changes from day to day. Oh, I really like my VDH. You know what? I think I like my Prop Pally a little bit more today. I don't know. That VDH is a lot of really cool control. Dude, both tanks are so good right now. And both tanks bring so much to the table. So let me, let me talk about Prop. I have, again, I have my notes here. I have my list. Let's talk about Prop Paladin for a second, okay? They don't mess around. Let me, let me, listen, if anyone's still here like 20 minutes into this video, they don't mess around. Prop Paladin is the real deal. You have a defensive for anything and everything out there, okay? You have a heal for yourself and the group. You have Lay on Hands, speaking of healing, Blessing of Sack, Blessing of Protection, Blessing of Spell Warding, if you take that talent. You have, uh, let's see, you have a stun? You have, it's a long stun too. You have an AOE CC, blinded by the light, or blinding light, blinded by, anyway, blinding light, I think is what it's called. You have a cleanse, excuse me, excuse me. You, I mean, the list goes on and on. This, this tank is the answer. It's just not quite as, 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 it's not quite as super duper OP as Vengeance, but I'm telling you, man, between Divine Toll, Avenger Shield, your Interrupt, all of the stuns and CC that I just I just uh, referenced. I mean, th think about the poll in front of the third boss in Everbloom, right? In fact, I'll even pull up MDT just to kind of make my point here. So um, I was doing stuff in season for season four here. Let's go to Dragonflight season three. Let's go to Everbloom again. It's literally the last day. By the time you watch this, the season's over, so it doesn't even matter. But we're talking about this poll right here. There's an Ice Collar, a Pyromancer, and an Arcanomancer. Ar Arcanomancer? Ar Arcanomancer? Anyway, um, as a prop paladin, I can lock down two of these mobs. No joke, man. I can lock down two of them, which leaves the other three to four people, depending upon if the healer has an interrupt, to handle one, maybe two NPCs at any given point in time. It is so dad. It feels so good, right? It just feels good as a prop paladin to bring so much to the table in terms of control. I would say that out of all of the tanks, Prop Paladin is actually on the weaker side of how well do I tank? Or how well does the class tank? That spectrum, right? But the control, what he can do is right up there with VDH, man. It's nuts. So I like, as a tank, I like having the ability to control a pole. Position, move, interrupt, stun, knockback, grip, whatever the case may be. I, that's that's what I like to do as a tank. I mean, 20 years ago for me it was oh well I have a lot of HP, I can shield, I have a shield, I can tank some damage. But nowadays, that's you know pretty much the average everyday experience. Any single tank can tank. I think what separates the men from the boys, so to speak, is how well does your tank manage a pull? How fluid? Is the dungeon run based on how the tank is pulling, positioning? Is he interrupting? Is he healing? Is he cleansing? Is he thising? Is he thatting? It's not just about can I tank? Uh, you better be able to tank, sucker. You gotta make sure you know how to actually interrupt and what the priorities are. And do I need to move this mob? How does bolstering affect this? I mean, the list goes on and on, right? That's that's what the, it makes the difference in every single person's experience with the tank. Anyway, I'm I'm monologuing as I normally do. Elemental Shaman. Uh, it, listen, my least favorite class of this whole season. Elemental Shaman, and I I played a little bit of enhancement too. I'm just wholly unimpressed. Just not not impressed. Didn't really enjoy them. Didn't really bring a lot to the table. And and you know, I I have this this uh, long running shtick to where oh shamans suck and so on and so forth. And I don't want to sit here and say that they suck. Because, you know, again, in the right hands, they do fine. My hands are not the hands that, that a shaman should be in. I, I, just, I just don't play it well. I don't really enjoy it. Out of all 13, my least favorite. Moving on. Demonology Warlock. Now, listen, I know Destro is arguably better, especially the higher keys uh, in the higher keys. But I love pet classes. I love what Demo can do and what it brings to the table. And I think I play it decently well at this point in time. 
I just, it's just been a lot of fun. I just love demonology, man. I just love pet classes. I'm telling dude, the class can pump. The class can live through anything. You got health stones, you got gateways. Uh, yeah, battle res. I mean, God, man, there's a reason why Warlock is so good right now, whether it's Demo or Destro. Sorry, Affliction, you suck. G better luck next time. There's nothing more to say. I love Demo. It's going to be one of the, the top three or four classes I play in Season 4. Beast Mastery Hunter. I tell you what, speaking of classes that I love to play, BM is one of those classes, but the more I play these other 13 or 12, in this case, classes, the less enjoyable BM became. And again, I think any class in any specialization can run your 24s, your 25s, your 6s, and in capable hands, you can have Beast Mastery Hunters clearing your 28s and your 29s. You can. But dude, to play a BM Hunter at a high, high level not only takes a lot of understanding and, and, and really knowing where your shortcomings and where your, your weaknesses are, but just take, like, you have to use some goofy trinkets. You have, to, you have to make sure that you're asking for every single, not maybe not literally, but you're practically begging for, you know, uh, external cooldowns from healers and whatnot. It's just, it's a chore. And, and, and that's what that's what it boils down to. The way that I look at it, my experience, and again, not that you suffer much from that in the 22 or 23s, but it's just the higher you climb, the more of a chore it is. And yes, that is universally true. Like, of course, if you're running a 29 or a 30, it's going to be a difficult key just based on the scaling. But when a class doesn't scale well, it's just, it, it just compounds the issue. And it's just, uh, I think if BM Hunters had more defensive options, it would be so much more enjoyable to play. And I just, I don't understand. This is a, this is a situation or, or an issue that I just don't get. When you have a gaming company like Blizzard and you have classes like a Warlock, in a class like a fire, you know, specialization like fire mage. And I can list off two or three more that are just so tanky. Or they have cheat death, or they have this, or they have that. And then you have classes like Affliction Warlock that are just suffering right now. And then your hunt, all three hunter specializations, which just don't do enough or can't live through enough. I just don't get it, man. I think balancing, by and large, is in a really good spot right now in most cases. But when we're talking about scaling things up to these crazy degrees, it just falls apart. But anyway, that's another topic for another day. Shadow Priest! Good Lord! Man, this class... You know, I keep saying class because I'm talking about a priest. I know it's a specialization of a class, so bear with me. Dude, Shadow Priest... Mmm. Mmm. I fell in love with this class so quickly during Season 3. And I know that season four is going to change it because of the tier set. They're, I think they're going back to either the, either their first or second tier uh, Dragonflight tier tier set. But I'm telling you, man, I can't wait to sink my teeth into it. I love practically everything about Shadow Priest right now. I know that I think that my biggest complaint is the fact that comparing it to my Warlock, I need to use like two, maybe even three defensive options versus zero or one uh, on my Warlock. Uh, I know that Priest, if you fade, it's like a 10% damage mitigation. There's a talent to where if you flash heal yourself, it's another 10% damage uh, mitigation effect. And then you have your power word um, shield, which is like a 120k absorption. So you can live through a lot as a Shadow Priest. You have Dispersion, you have Desperate Prayer, um, you have, I mean, VE for the group. There's a lot of either healing or absorption or mitigation you bring to the table for yourself and or your group. And I love that. But it does require just a couple of extra key presses compared to, again, a Demo Warlock, right? Or a Destruction Warlock, I should say. Or just Warlocks in general. And that's okay because, again, if you can live through it based on the, the tools that you have. Get up! Sorry, I had uh, something, whatever. That, that was weird. Um, but yeah, ultimately, Shadow Priests are just, they're good, man. They're good. They're fun to play. They're strong. They can survive through a lot of stuff. They bring fortitude to the group. I mean, it, there's, they're, it's, they're just a blast. Absolutely one of my favorite classes to play this entire season, and I will be playing it in season four. And then the king of the crop, king of the hill, blah, 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 vengeance demon hunter. There's just no comparison. Yes, prop paladins do a lot. Yes, Guardian Druids can live through a lot and so on and so forth. There's a reason why VDH 
is the meta tank right now. I didn't understand it until I played it. I didn't get it, man. To me, I just didn't I just didn't understand. It can literally do everything. He can heal himself through literally any mechanic, any fight, any pull. It's nuts. He can grip. He can stun. He can silence for five seconds. Not just one NPC, but a group of NPCs. He can mitigate damage. He can ignore damage. He can run away. He's got he's, just, he's got an answer to everything. It's insane. And assuming nothing changes, and at this point in time, nothing has changed. Assuming nothing changes for season four, there's there's no there's no end in sight for this class and specialization. Uh, if you're not playing VDH for high keys, you're insane. Again, the other five tanks can do it to to some degree, or to an equal or similar degree, but Vengeance just does it better and more safely in most cases. It's absolutely wild, man. But anyway, there you have it. Um, I know this is a really long video. Too bad, so sad. Season three is a wrap. Again, last day. By the time this hits the YouTubes, season three may be over. I, I might, not even, might not even get this up until... I'll probably get it up tonight, but... I genuinely had a lot of fun during season three. I know I had a lot of complaints early on about the time factor, and that is absolutely true, and that will forever be true anytime someone tries to do a challenge like this. I think it would have been less stressful had I started this at the beginning of season three instead of toward the middle of season three. But yeah, I don't think I'm going to be doing it anytime soon, but I'm absolutely going to be playing three to four classes pretty regularly throughout season four. Uh, Warlock, Shadow Priest, Vengeance DH, Prop Paladin. And you might see me jumping on a Guardian Druid. You might see me running a key on the other, you know, nine or so classes just because I want to, just, just to keep up with them. But yeah, th those, those four that I just listed are, are easily my favorite right now. And for good reason. They're strong, they're meta, and they're fun, at least for me. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how season four will look for me personally. You know, how much time will I be investing on season four? versus the war within alpha and eventual beta uh will i be raiding i don't know i i haven't really been seeking out a raid team i might pug heroic for uh for certain pieces but then again you have the bullion cubes or whatever they're called to allow you to target specific pieces of gear i don't know man we'll see how season four goes uh i, I i'm not gonna sit here and try to figure it all out because i just don't know but i'm gonna have fun and i hope you have fun too that's really what it boils down to right fun woo fun yeah but yeah, we'll see what we'll see what uh, what happens if any opportunities come and knocking and we'll take it from there. But anyway, I will be doing another video series in season four, uh, kind of targeting those three or four characters instead of 13. So uh, I'm hoping that will allow me to be a bit more consistent, a bit more enthused and energetic and just happy to be talking about three or four classes that I really like playing instead of 13 classes that I either tolerate playing or don't enjoy playing if you know based on the shaman and whatnot so i'm looking to be a bit more cohesive and co consistent and we'll just see where we'll see where the weeks and months ahead take us but yeah the war within alpha and beta well the alpha is underway and the beta is you know not that far off probably a couple more months and then we'll see how it all shapes up and comes together for the release later this year yeah my name's brutal get out of here hope you had a great season three i did but i hope you did too and if you guys want to run keys in season four those are the characters. They've been up there the entire time on the at the top of my screen slash your screen. So I'm on Area 52. Shoot me a whisper. Uh, slide into my DMs. Whatever, man. Come hang out. I love you. My name is Brutal. Get out of here. Live well. Be well. Do well. Until next time.